Tiny Kitten, what are you doing? Oh my god, he's got a mouse. Tiny Kitten, did you bring a mouse in? Give me that mouse. Okay, let, let go of the mouse. Let go. Yeah, he fucking chomped the shit out of that mouse, bro. He literally just brought it in. The mouse tried to leg it, and Tiny Kitten was like, nope, jumped on it and just fucking munched it. Poor thing. Dude, I told you, man. Feral OP. This is my actual class or spec rankings down here on the left. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look. And this was my pre... Give us S plus tier. No. This is my pre runes tier list predictions, right? So we're going to look on here and compare and see how we feel. This is this is tiers based off the abilities and talents that classes get. And this is the tiers based off basically everything, kind of. It's mo more, more heavily favoring the runes, but yeah. So... What, what would we change, first of all? So, Arms Warrior is in A already, and I think that they will stay in A. Maybe later in the phase, when they're, like, fully bis and they're going to do really high damage in group PvP, then they can be quite oppressive, potentially, and and maybe move up into S. But I think for now that A is a safe pick for them. Uh, they're going to ha have good mobility, but may suffer from just generally lacking damage a little bit, potentially, slash, slash rage. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. It's a hard one to call. Warriors scale really well, so it's whether their scaling is kind of kicked in enough yet, basically. Uh, Rep Paladin has come down from S to A. I brought it down a lot because of their lack of new tools from abilities and talents. They got a lot of OP rune stuff that had them in S tier in the first phase, and they're not really getting amazing runes for Rep in the next in this phase. They're getting Sacred Shield, which is I guess is the main thing which is going to be problematic, and that's going to be problematic on all Palace specs. But offensively, they're not really getting that much. So I'm putting them down to A tier. So yeah, where are we at? Let me see. Red Pala, Holy Pala. So Holy Pala I had down in B tier, but with the new runes, I actually think they're going to be sick. Maybe I'm overranking how strong Sacred Shield is going to be, but 50, uh, but 500 Absorb, a Sacred Shield proc seems insane every six seconds. I feel like that's so much healing. So I'm putting them bang out in S tier. Like that's just, that's, yeah, it's nutty. Uh, and then Shockadin, which isn't on the list, but I actually think they're going to be around B tier, maybe A tier. I'm not sure exactly how much damage they're going to do yet. They might be a little bit annoying, but I don't think you're going to see that many of them. Yeah, they're going to also have an Aura Mastery Helm. So, it's like tank is breaking back in. I think the default value from Wrath is 600, not 500. Is it actually 500? Let me see. Yeah, no, you're right. Maybe that's why it says 500 then. Maybe that's why. Maybe it won't be 500. Be interesting to see. Good shout. It seems like a wee copy pasted tooltip thing at 500 will be on dumb. Yeah, I mean, the, a powered shield is like 480 or something at level 40 base. So having this thing proc every six seconds for more than a power shield would be spicy. Yeah, I mean, I've got powers in S tier at the moment. Powers might go up to A tier. S tier is, is potentially an overreaction, but it's going to be around. Um, I don't think it's going to be B tier anymore. I think they're getting stronger ever so slowly. They're getting a bunch of nice new things, so... Maybe the, you know what? I think I'm gonna put them in A. I think that the Sacred Shield is purgeable. I think I think S is an overreaction. I think Disc still has way better tools, and no dispel magic on Palas, but more raw healing, more efficiency. I think A is fair. Thoughts, chat? I'm gonna put them in A. I like it. Shocking it. Okay, we didn't do MM Hunter. So the thing with MM Hunter, right, and the thing with hunters in general is, if they shift some of the power off the pet, like they should, onto just general attacks, MM gets stronger, BM gets weaker. If that happens, then BM will be A tier, MM will be S tier. If the pet stays the same, then a BM will be S tier and it will be insanely, insanely oppressive. And MM won't be as strong because of the, the range attacks on a strong. MM is getting more utility through things like Scattershot. Survival is getting a lot more utility through, you know, all of the good stuff, health stuff, AOE stuff, slow stuff, all that crap in Survival. I think survival has the potential, again, I said this last phase, but the survival has the potential to be really, really strong. Especially now that they're getting trap launcher. And this is going to be 40 yards and allow them to do a slow trap and AOE trap independently. Both of which can proc, proc entrapment, which is going to be very, very oppressive, especially in things like Warsong. So survival hunter getting a lot of good shit, especially melee specialist as well. MM getting more damage for exposed weakness and BM more of the same plus they get an extra button push in steady shot vanilla entrapment rolling 25 percent every chat every two sec during frost trap cve life yeah i mean it's, it's rough for sure so yeah hunters gonna be pretty strong overall but it really depends on how they balance the damage as to what's gonna be where but i think there's a 
you know, there's going to be definitely some specs in the end. BM is, is going to be very, very oppressive if they don't nerf pets. It's going to be very, very scary. So I think BM up here. I think I'm going to put survival up here as well with them. MM going to leave down here for now. But it, it's it's hard to predict that one. We'll have to wait and see. And what have we got next? Sub Rogue. Sub Rogue already had an S tier. I think they have insane utility and damage burst. Now they're getting Shadow Step as well. And Master of Sub Subtlety for more burst. So I think Sub Rogue is firmly an S tier. Yeah, good class. Good spec. Asa and Combat are a little bit behind. A little bit less utility, no prep, things like that. So only one round of cooldowns. They have good sustain damage, but not as much burst. They didn't have as good mobility, but now they're both able to get step as well. So this actually brings them both up a little bit. But if you can actually get away from either of these, you're gonna you're gonna be able to deal with them. So I'm I'm personally gonna be more scared of sub rogues, but I think Aster and Combat can still do good stuff. Uh, next we've got Disc Priest. Disc Priest, I think, is gonna remain S tier. They didn't get great belt runes. But they got Pain Sap and Dispersion on Boots. So you have the options to run either, which is going to be really, really, really powerful. You're going to have a really hard time killing Priests in the next phase as a result of this. And then, yeah, Empowered Renew or, or Renewed Hope for more healing, basically. And Mind Spike for some nice ranged damage. It's got a 35-yard range on this bad boy, so pretty good. Yeah, and you've got the Tailoring Boots as well. Don't forget. And then Shadow Priest, we also have in the end, getting Mind Spike on the belt. And then either pain up or dispersion on the boots. Gonna probably start with pain up when it's on cooldown, rotate into PF. Sorry, start with disperse and when it's on cooldown, run it, rotate into pain up. One sec, my cat is trolling again. So basically, the benefits of PS are that you can use it on teammates, right? Whereas dispersion is giving you mana back and is usable in CC. So most likely you're gonna, as disc, like start the fight in Warsong with the PS on, throw it on someone, and then rotate out into dispersion when you get an option and push in with the dispersion so that you know you can absorb a little bit of damage yourself and potentially pull back and this is gonna you know allow your team to to play more aggressively because you've absorbed some of the enemy team's damage pain up will be usable on self as well just the standard pain up tooltip shadow fiend yeah shadow fiend is going to be on legs i haven't included it on here but basically everyone's going to have shadow fiend which just only buffs all of the specs basically i'm going to put holy precedence here i think man like i really don't want to but it's like it plays out so similarly to disc and it's just more of a heal bot than than a damage boy i think it's i think you've got it right just because how good spirit of redeemer is shadow fiend can be quality of life sooner i mean we'll see i'd be surprised man i'd be surprised if it is but this redeemer thing needs to get deleted from the game asap it's super toxic for the game the thing is right if you look on here right yeah here yeah. Now, I, I don't know if anyone has any, like, conclusive information on Shadow Fiend, right? But if you look on here, Engrave Pants, Shadow Fiend, right? It says that it's a rune, right? But if you search for Shadow Fiend, there's this random ass scroll as well. So it's like, you don't know which one it's going to be, you know? So, flip a coin. Who knows, man? It's it's going to be one or the other, right? The leg runes are already in, right? It's the one that Homie's and Pom is on. Yeah, there's a new trinket in. I can't remember what it's called. But yeah, you need to watch out for that. Um, anyway, continuing with the tier list, and we're doing some adjustments. So I think I'm going to put Holy Priest in a tier. I'm just trying to think in duels, in world PvP, you're probably going to play it relatively similarly similarly to Disc. In, in Warsong, you'll probably run Spirit of the Redeemer. You can rel you can potentially, you know, switch it on in, in certain fights. So just be annoying, waste time, wait cooldowns out, wait your Fira cooldown, these kind of things. So definitely potential there for it. I... I I don't think it's fair that I don't rank Holy properly just because I think the rune is fucking toxic, you know? Like, yeah, I don't even know what to say, honestly. Like, it's 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 not a fun ability to press. It's not a fun ability to play against. Overall, I don't think it should exist. I don't know what else to, to, to say about it. It's just a mess. So we're going to move on. Disappointing. Hopefully it won't be in the game, basically. But next up, we're going Hans Shaman in A. Which we have already... No, we've got MB right now. So I think moving up Enhanced to A. Enhanced still going to have some mobility issues. And I think that's what's kind of keeping it out of S potentially. Although Decoy Totem will help them a little bit with the freedom. Maelstrom Weapon obviously giving them a little bit more range potential. Kind of same with Fine Over. And then the 200 Mastery. 200 Enhanced might just be really, really scary. So that's one to watch out for as well. So I've moved the Enhanced up to A. And then Resto Shaman actually coming down into b because they didn't get riptide they haven't got any decent runes really 
They, they're going to be running Maelstrom weapon as well on the belt or power surge, which both of which aren't that reliable for them. And then decoy totem. Okay, the freedom is nice and, and mostly rest of shaman is going to be about utility, but they don't really have a dispel. So it's like how much value it really is that, you know. So rest of shaman coming down for me because they're going to be casting a lot. You know, the chain heal is decent, but it's a longer cast time. Same with healing wave. So they're very easily stoppable. So offensively, they're pretty good. You know, on, on, on a utility level, they're pretty good. But healing wise, they're not great. So that's why they're down in B. Because most of the utility they bring can also be brought by Ellie and Enhance. And Enhance can basically run these same things, except do it better, right? So resto down here. Next up, we got Frost Mage. And Frost Mage are ranked at A because we didn't know the runes yet. But seeing the runes with things like Spell Power, Missile Barrage, and all of the good stuff that Frost is getting... I've actually decided Frost is in S tier. I think Frost is going to be very strong. Going to have a crazy, crazy damage, crazy utility, crazy survival, crazy control. So I've moved it up. I skipped Ellie. You may well be right. Ellie, we thought was going to be insanely strong. Maybe the best, best group spec in the game. It also now got some stuff to deal with smaller scale combat with Maelstrom weapon. Uh, so like duels and things like that where they won't be able to cast as much. This is going to give them a lot more damage potential in those duels. So, yeah. Ellie Shaman firmly in S tier. Very, very, very strong spec. Fire Mage is... We had it in A tier. I think that stays in A tier. Same with Arcane Mage. They're going to have really good damage overall, but they're going to lack a little bit more of that survivability that Frost has and a little bit of the utility that Frost has. So, I think even though Frost is probably slightly less overall damage, it has really good burst. Maybe more burst than the other two. Maybe not Arcane. Arcane is just really, really pumpy overall single target not as good aoe fire with a little bit more aoe but the frost just has so much control to it that it kind of just has this all round power rather than you know the the more focused damage power that the other two have so the other two in a tier frost in s tier a healer mage is kind of a mess right now i haven't got it on here but i would put healer mage roughly in b tier it has good aoe healing but the new rune kind of looks weird i feel like they've maybe worded it weirdly i don't know if the data mining is correct or incorrect or what so we'll have to kind of wait and see on that one. Not not um not a big fan of the way that Healer Mage is looking at the moment. It looks a bit awkward. And next is, is the kind of the, the big surprise. We thought Affliction Lock was going to be in the S tier, but the runes are so bad. The runes are basically that they give you a little bit more damage on a couple of them, or an extra tick on your dot, or a pretty bad AOE dot in terms of PvP. So I'm bringing Affliction Lock down into A tier. The Affliction Lock Overlords are moving down slowly, and SL Lock is in B tier. And yeah, it's going to be very tanky and there's definitely going to be some niches for it, potentially in Warsong, something like that, just to be really annoying with Soul Link and Meta. However, and Drain as well, of course. However, the damage of the spec is going to be relatively bad. They're not going to have access to instant corruption. So Agony is kind of being, going to be their main damage source, which also isn't great. So it's going to be like Agony slash Searing Pain spam. And it's just overall, they're not going to put out a lot of pressure and they're just going to be really annoying. Uh, and then lastly, Destro Log, which I think also is going to be in B tier due to... They get some more damage, but again, they have to cast a lot and it's kind of awkward and the runes kind of suck, right? And it's just like, you got to... It begs the question, why Destro Lock went Ellie, you know? They both kind of have the same options to cast stuff, roughly the same cast times, but if Ellie does it, they get insane reward for it and Destro doesn't really. So, yeah. Y you... You're going to have a hard time getting enough casts off to actually get much done on Destro. And unless it's something like a BG. And then again, if the Ellie got the equivalent off, you know, shit's going down. And the last class is going to be Druids. And again, I feel like this was a little bit of a surprise. But Feral Druid got insane runes, right? They got Berserk, which is basically a 50% energy reduction on their, their, their abilities. Yeah, I'll show you. So reduces any energy cost for all cat form abilities by 50%. And also removes fear and makes you immune for 15 seconds, which is just insane, right? And then on top of that, they got King of the Jungle, which is making Tiger's Fury increase damage by 15%, right? It's off global and it instantly grants you 60 energy on only a 30 second cooldown. So this is like insane burst potential for Feral right now. So Ferals are definitely going to be scary if they open up on you. So watch out for that. They're going to be a little bit squishy. And that's going to be their main main downfall. They don't have Mortal Strike and they're a bit squishy. But they have really good mobility and they have really good burst damage. So, yeah. Keep an eye out for Ferals. They will be more prominent in this patch. Balanced Druids still on the S tier. Speaking of, I need to move Feral up to S tier. I'll put them over here. Uh, and Balanced Druids are still firmly in S tier. Until Star Surge gets nerfed, I can't see them moving out of S tier. 
Eclipse might even work on Star Surge with the wording of it, since it buffs. If you Wrath, it gives the Starfire a 30% crit, and it also stacks. So if you suddenly are able to give your Star Surge a load of crit by using Wrath, it's going to absolutely pump. So that's very, very scary. But I'm putting it in A. If, if it does affect Star Surge, it's definitely an S tier, S -tier rune. Nourish is another option if you want to play it a little more, bit more defensively. And then Dream Straight is, is great. If you crit, you get Mana Regen, which is nice for, for Balanced Druids, who will also be getting Innovate. And then finally, we've got Resto Druids, who are in A tier, the other A tier healer with Holy Palace. And their Hots are starting to scale. They're going to get more, more healing power. They got Nourish, so they got that niche Flash Heal that they didn't really have before. That's kind of filled. And then obviously the option to do either Dream State, if they want to Wrath, try and get a crit and do some regen with the, the free Wrath Rune, there's the option for that. Or Survival Instincts, if they think they're going to be targeted a little bit more, they can go bare and, and pop that wall and be tankier. But they're not that game-changing in the way of the runes. So yeah, if, if Residrude got better runes, I think they'd probably be up in S tier. And I think later phases, we might see them moving up into S tier when they get more bonus healing. So yeah, that's it for now. That's the tier list changes. So we've got Disc, Holy Shadow, all in S tier. Frost, Balance, Ellie. Feral, Subrogue, BM Hunter, and Survival Hunter. And then in A tier, we got Holy Pala, Resto Druid. We've got Arms Warrior, Enhanced Shaman, Rep Pala. We've got Asa Rogue, MM Hunter, Fire Mage, Arcane Mage, Affliction Lock. Then in B tier, we've got Resto Shaman, Combat Rogue, Destro Lock, Demo Lock. And then in C tier, slash NA. I don't think anyone's going to play Fury, Pro or other Pro. Remains to be seen. Maybe somebody comes up with something creative, but it's hard to predict. So I'm leaving those out for now. And that is the tier list updated for the rune leaks. I hope that is helpful. I am getting a drink of water. I'm parched. Penny Kitten, you need to stop, mate. Leave it be. Get it later. Come on, you've had your dried. How are you going in?